Okay, now, when we talk of security, uh, before that, practice thing. I'm a very technology savvy person. I believe in technology. I am a technologist. I help develop technology. I help create technology, but I also use technology a lot. A lot. I believe technology is a big enabler, not only from a point of cost saving or ease of efficiency, but moving the entire human race into a next generation where a lot of problems we're facing today, which are of utmost significance to our existence, including energy, including bombing, including sustainability, and including our life on a day-to-day -day basis, can be tackled to a large extent with the use of technology. Technology may not replace humans, but technology can make these things much easier, and I am a very, very firm believer of that. But when it comes to technology, when it comes to transformation, I think the first thing, first thing we all start worrying about is, is this really something we should be doing because of security? Is security a very, very critical thing? Is it easy, simple, we should not be really worried? Well, I should say, it's, it's, it's the other side of the problem. When you do technology, when you embed, adopt technology, you also have to look at the other side of it. Yes, it comes with its own concern, it comes with its own uh, problems. So let me start with a question, and there will be a small gift to whoever answers this question. Where does anybody remember this? I'm sure this. people who are in the industry for maybe more than 20 years, they should know this. So just a guess. Maybe. Sea Brain was the first commercial virus, and uh, you know who produced it? Pakistan. I think the biggest uh, contribution of Pakistan to IT industry is this. <laughs> who else can do it better? So, when I joined the industry in '96, this was the biggest problem we had. And incidentally, I joined as an antivirus engineer. And everybody used to say, you know, virus is a big problem. And let me say, today, do we feel virus is a big problem? May not. I haven't, I mean, yes, virus is there, but I haven't been very much concerned about virus too much today because there are so many other big problems and they are much, much, much bigger than this. Sometime back, and, and let me tell you why we should be worried about today's uh, security issues. Very recently, because many people tell me, I work with a lot of customers, they tell me, Oh, we are a small player, we are a non-significant player, there are hospitals, we should not have problems. Nobody is really going to hurt me. But let me give you a very small example. It happened just three weeks back. In a small town called Jammu, not a very significant town from an industry perspective. There's no business, it's a tourism town. I, I actually hear from Jammu Kashmir. So one of my friends called me. He knows I do security and all this. And early morning, and he says, a vehicle dealership in Germany, a small one, maybe a company with a turnover of two crores, three crores, that's it. A small dealership is hit by a ransomware attack to the morning. And I was also a bit surprised in who is going to look at a small dealership of two crore, three crore company in Germany and they're going to hit it. What will he get out of it? And my next question was, is there a demand? He said, yes, when we open that system, it says you need to transfer one bitcoin. And that was again a kind of surprise. Why the hell somebody should take pain to attack and all that just for one bitcoin? Three lakh, four lakh rupees? But if the question is not about the magnitude, the question is one bitcoin attack, a ransomware attack in a small company, very small company, in a small town in Jammu, is itself a big concern. Because for that person sitting there, whose bread and butter is the data which has been taken hosted is like society. So for him, it doesn't matter whether he's a small player, it doesn't matter whether he's asking just one Bitcoin, the biggest issue is his data has been taken away. And he never bothered because my question was, what type of firewall do you use? Oh, we don't know. What type of security measures? We don't have any. We have a guy who manages all of our PC. Whatever he does, he does. We don't even know what he does. So the problem is not that it requires somebody to look at 
a bigger company or a mid-sized company, the problem is it can hit anywhere, anytime, and anybody. Security is an utmost critical concern for all of us because it does not spare the big or small. Right? So, when we look at what is happening today around us, we just have heard a wonderful presentation by Mr. Chanta around digital, how Tata is using that. And I'm sure every company is trying to do that. We had a session today morning where we talked about AR and VR. Now, when we do all these things, we are actually creating a lot of tools, a lot of ease of use for our employees, our customers, our partners, and the best of things to use. That is digital. That's what digital transformation, digital adoption is doing across the world, and especially in this country, we talk more about India because that's where we are, that's where the concern is. When we look at the number of startups we have, and more of those startups do one thing, 90% of them, they come to us and say, we are doing digital experience, digital transformation. Great, which means in the next five years, if you look at, and I can tell you, we'll have so many solutions around us, so much of bouquet of solutions, we don't have to look beyond India to buy one solution. On the contrary, countries outside India should come to India to buy those solutions, because our startups are really, really creating very innovative solutions. And when we look at all that, when we look at how digital transformation is changing the way this country is, is working today, whether it is digital India story, smart cities, or make in India, or whatever we are doing on every day basis, the concern becomes a bit bigger. When too much of digital transformation and digital adoption is happening all around us, which means we are going to now look at the second side of the story, the secure part of it. Data, privacy, content, access, and of course, the bigger things like ransomware attacks. So, the best part the best silver lining is we are still at a stage of climbing the ladder. We are not at 90% adoption. We are not at 80% adoption. Our adoption is still within 45 to 50%, but it's, it's increasing. A survey done last year in 2018 versus a survey done just two years back in 2016 gives us this story that within two years, the number of people who adopted digital technologies or who adopted digital transformation has doubled. Which means we are increasing the ladder very fast. We are still halfway. That's a good thing. Which means not everybody is digital, so we have enough time to look at how securely we can manage this. But at the same time, the, the race is very fast. So we have to be very, very fast when it comes to embodying the security concept in every digital transformation initiative we take today. Couple of areas which are making it very complicated. One is human and machine interaction. Today's digital is not about computers, human, process, employee, payroll, and all those things. It's gone beyond that. Look at this example. Look at this example in the city where we are. This is an example which actually signifies the best use of technology by what I call the lower side of pyramid, which is our agriculture, rural, dairy, and, 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 and agrarian population. 60% of India is there. How best they use technology? We call this cows to cloud model. Cows to cloud. How the use of technology or mix of technologies is giving benefit to people who run dairy farms. And this example is from the city where we are sitting today. Best example. But when we look at that now, the concern goes beyond computers. The concern goes into those RFID devices. The concern goes the data which travels from RFID to reader to the cloud so that we know what these cows and buffaloes are doing in real time. Great. But the problem is our security complexity increases here. It increases because we no longer have to look at only laptop and PC and server to manage or network to manage. We have to manage those sensors, those readers, those devices and aggregators which are all around us thanks to smart city kind of stories. In every city, thousands and thousands and thousands of sensors are getting it. So which means the complexity to make it secure is higher. The complexity to manage that very securely and manage the data very securely is also very higher. The good thing is, yes, there's a lot of research, a lot of development happening in this field, and we are now looking at solutions which are coming to us. Look at the second part. Artificial intelligence merged with IoT creating a new concept called IQ, intelligent quotient of things. Things are becoming intelligent. The first phase of IoT was all about connectivity, internet of things, connecting things together. 
The second phase is putting a layer of AI and data on top of that and saying it's become intelligent. Let the thing itself decide what it wants to do. Let the camera itself decide whether it wants to call the police if it sees a criminal or it wants to shoot the gun itself. <coughs> or let, let the car decide when it is being hijacked or when it is being stolen what it has to do. It has to get hold or it has to take drive towards the police station. Those are the kind of experiments which are happening today with IoT by embedding artificial intelligence into that. And that is giving us intelligent things. And when you have intelligent things all around you, then you have to worry more about how I will put a secure layer on those things, which are no longer those typical computers or server or that. Right? So that's another, another area which is happening much faster and giving us some kind of complexities to deal with. Robotics, AR, VR. These are a lot of technologies which are all around us. And the complexity is how do we now deal with security areas like this? How do we manage right from an antivirus, which was our good old problem, to network security, firewall, to content security, to data security, and then to sensor security and then reader security and aggregator security or camera security or traffic signal security, because everything is digital, everything has data, everything transmits. How do I make sure that nobody can hack into those things? You remember some of those Hollywood movies uh, we have been seeing for many, many years where somebody hacks the traffic signal across the city and puts everything clean, the traffic gets jumbled up. That's the reality. That's happening. Look at the hospitals. In last one year, if some of you have seen those reports, in India there have been 88 attacks on hospital rooms. 88 attacks. There will be many more because people don't tend to report, but there are 88 reported attacks on hospitals, small and big, small and big. And the beauty is, sorry, the problem is hospital records are very critical. If you, if the hospital loses records, which are very critical records of a patient, it can be very disastrous. So there have been 88 attacks which shows that attackers and people on the other side of the game are actually no longer worried about the wikis, no longer worried about the big data centers and cloud and all those things to have. They're looking at smaller aspects because that is where they feel they can get into that. And that's where we feel the complexity of security is much, much, much higher with emerging technologies and with whatever is happening all around us. So that is giving rise to a digital risk. We had a digital opportunity in first place, good, we managed to make our life much easier, do things like this, but that also gave rise to something called digital risk. We are more risky today than we were 30 years back with antiviruses and viruses. So, this statement, I think everybody should agree. I haven't seen a single mobile phone with, which does not have those apps, and then you read sometimes either on WhatsApp or Facebook or somewhere that there are apps which are, being, which are getting banned, there are apps which are taking data out from, you know, India to somewhere else and all those kind of things. Uh, and the problem with apps is that when we download an app, we give our consent to the app to take the data. Because when we download it asks you three questions. App would like to access your contacts. You have to say yes. The moment you say no, you cannot use the app. And we don't even bother, we just say yes, yes, yes. And then it takes data and tomorrow you can't even complain because it shows that you have given the consent. The data protection laws globally says that content is important and if you give the content intentionally or unintentionally, you have, they have an enemy that you have a consent. Right? So, there are, there are attacks everywhere, there are problems everywhere and there's a mentality behind these attacks which is, as I said, moving from attacking the biggies and, and the much known kind of things to smaller ones, to hospitals, smaller towns, to auto dealerships, and maybe tomorrow homes, so by the way, or cars, by the way. You know? So, when we look at all this, the good thing is, there's a lot around us which we have today to manage. There's a lot of research happening in this area, a lot of companies, including my own company, is spending a lot of investment in this area so that we bring those solutions, products, and tools to make things easier when it comes to the digital part of story, not the, not the good old computers and servers. So today we have security tools, we have security uh, flavors for sensors, for aggregators, for 
kiosks for those kind of devices like variables which you make on smartphones, the biggest, the biggest one which we carry every day. So when we look at security transformation, when Dell looks at security transformation, we take a risk driven approach. We agree in the first place that there is a risk. There is a risk because if somebody comes to me and says, I don't see a risk, I am totally secure, maybe we are living in a different paradise. Because as somebody said, either you are hacked or you don't know that you are hacked. So that, those are the scenarios for you. So when we look at the risk part of it, we start with the other part of story, edge. Because what we believe is, and it's not only, it's proven that 90 plus percent of attacks which happen, happens to the last device. It can be your smartphone, it can be a laptop, it can be a kiosk uh, sitting in a shopping mall, or it can be an ATM machine or whatever. The 90 percent plus attacks, or 90 percent plus problems originate from the edge. So it's the other way around today. 10 years back, the biggest concern about all CIO IT was to prevent the data center. Firewalls and you know, DMZs and all those things. No longer, because your 95% of data is originating from your edge. Last night, when I work on my mobile phone on the airport, when I work on my laptop sitting at my home, I am creating data which can be very critical, so I need to worry about the lag device rather than worrying about this. So we start from the edge, where 90% plus attacks happen, and then come to core, which is all about the applications, data center, and major uh, content areas, and finally, of course, the cloud part of it. So it's an all inclusive, all inclusive uh, story which we take together, right from an edge to core to cloud. That's the kind of uh, kind of concept uh, we, we, we believe in. And uh, when we look at security, we look at security more as a transformation. Like we have digital transformation, you have IT transformation. Security also needs to have its own ways it needs to do. As I said, because one size here doesn't fit all. Ten years back, we were only worried about computers, and today we are worried about those sensors and devices in the field. So what we have done is we have brought in a big portfolio together, right from the edge on the top to core and cloud, and on the other side, which helps you to predictively protect, which helps you to protect before the attack happens, or which helps you to bring back your things when the attack has already happened. That kind of solution, that kind of technologies are being produced around the clock and then we have a dedicated research center in Israel which works 24 by 7 with a team of 100 plus very strong uh, experts from cyber world uh, who, whose job is to just look at the new things and create tools, technologies and techniques to deal with them. That kind of investments we are making into security area. Some two, three uh, examples I will give before I close. Uh, internet separation is a concept we brought in especially for very critical uh, workplaces like the very high government workplaces, uh, army defense kind of workplaces where typically they want to keep their public access totally separated from their private access. And in many cases still now what they used to do is they used to have maybe two PCs or three PCs or two devices, three devices with those officers who will have to use one device for Facebook and Google and another device to access the company internal intranet so that nobody can penetrate. So we brought in a, we brought in a concept called internet separation which is an end-to-end -end virtualization right from desktop to network to server to cloud virtualization and, and this has been brought jointly by Dell and VMware which is now part of Dell Technologies and we started this in Japan three years back and Singapore by the way was one of the first countries which actually made it mandatory for their critical officers like defense and the government to adopt internet separation. India, there are a lot of guidelines being prepared on that. There's no obligation right now, but many critical areas like government, ministries, uh, oil and gas, and those nine sectors, seven sectors which are treated as critical have been looking at adopting these kind of technologies. Number two, uh, intelligent security services. I already told you we have a center backed by 100 plus very senior cyber security experts sitting in Israel, Tel Aviv, round the clock working on creating, managing and making sure our customers and our partners and even our own internal infrastructure and applications are round the clock secure from these big things like attacks and ransomware and darknet and all those kind of things. And analytics, round the clock analytics. Uh, 24 hours a day, we have teams in India, 
in Israel and in US who work almost 24 hours a day in different shifts to analyze every bit and pieces what comes in and goes out from our company so that we are very sure that it does not carry any kind of thing. Last uh, six months back, the matrix we had was they analyzed 1.9 billion incidents in three months' time. 1.9 billion incidents in three months' time. That kind of uh, focus we have put on and that's what we have not seen much of the problems in our own internal environment. And uh, finally, if something happens, if something happens because nobody can say 100% that nothing will happen. We are living in a, in a world where we are smart, but the other side is even more smart. So if something happens, a ransomware attack or something, we have a technology solution backed by a lot of tools which you call isolated recovery in case your data goes, God forbid, taken away by ransomware attack, you can still have an all clean last copy of data, totally segregated, totally aloof from that network which has been hacked. So that kind of solution, that kind of technology, that kind of tools we have put in place so that uh, we are not only able to uh, able to customers, we also have to make sure that we comply with the law like GDPR and India's own law which is coming, which all of you know, uh, India Data Protection Law which should be implemented any time now because they are waiting for government to reform which has been already done. So when we look at security, we look at security as a transformation, we look at security as an all-encompassive uh, concept right from edge to core to cloud because we believe that it's a 90% class, 7% class and 3% class kind of attacks happen through these areas. We come from Dell Technologies, which you all know is the world's biggest end-to-end -end IT infrastructure company. Any questions, any queries, you can always come back to our booth as well as you can ask us. We will be all around here. Thank you very much and have a great day. Thank you so much, Shade, and uh, thank you for that power delivery there.